Hey, I'm Tucker of Tuck's Garage. I am a maker, I'm a machinist, and I 3D printed an Iron Man suit. Let me show you the journey of how I got here and how I made it. I used a single Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon 3D printer for my entire build. My primary materials were PLA for the rigid parts and TPU95 for the flexible parts. If I had a part that was too big to fit on the build plate of my printer, I would use slicing software, Bamboo Studio in my case, to cut the parts up into printable components and then glued everything together. I cut the back torso into six parts and the front into four parts to print everything out. I started with the helmet. I printed all the parts out, used magnets, brass inserts, and screws to put it all together and did the electronics. I wanted the eyes to glow blue and the helmet to open and close without needing a hand to control it. Getting the helmet complete really encouraged me to keep going with the rest of the suit. I moved on to the torso, printing out sections at a time. I glued the frame together, printed out the moving flaps, and started assembling. I have all the flaps controlled from an Arduino Nano using a servo breakout board. I tested each flap and programmed the movement myself. Once that worked, I printed up and wired up an arc reactor and soldered together LED light rings with a magnetic connector to make it removable. Moving on to the abs and cod, I used TPU95 for the sides and back of the torso section so that I could comfortably move around in the suit. I used elastic straps and buckles to hold everything together, and the abs were a hard PLA that were attached with elastic strapping. The cod piece was four sections of PLA using craft foam and elastics to hold it together. Then the legs needed printed and assembled. I, this took the longest time as I needed to be comfortable when walking in them. I printed the upper legs 20% shorter so that I could sit when wearing my Iron Man suit. I used medical knee braces for the knee hinge and designed my own mounts to put them in the legs. Getting the spacing right took a lot of trial and error and a lot of testing. To go with the legs, I needed shoes. I cut out a lot of the original STL file for the feet and got the shell to fit over a sneaker. I wanted it to be comfortable to walk in and easy to put on. I used TPU for the foot to shin pieces to make walking a little easier and give parts a little flex so they wouldn't bend or break when walking. The arms were a challenge in themselves. I had to fit all the electronics and batteries in the forearms, which controlled the missile open and close, as well as the wrist laser. I ended up going through three iterations to get everything to fit properly. The hands were printed and each part held together with elastic straps. I wired up a small LED ring with a control board to use for the palm light of each hand. I could control the palm lights with magnetic switches in the pointer finger and the right hand add a extra special wireless transmitter that would let me control the torso flaps of my suit. The wireless was nice because I didn't need to run wires from the torso to the hand, keeping everything nice and tidy. Finally, I was able to put everything together and wear it around for Halloween. I had a blast making it and had more fun wearing it around. This is just the start of my journey, so stay tuned for more to come like this. I appreciate you watching my journey of how I made this Iron Man suit. I have so much more coming in the future. I plan on making another Iron Man suit. There will be so much more to come. This is just the beginning of my journey. If you want to see more, my Instagram is tuck underscore garage. Give me a follow and you will see all the shenanigans that I post about Iron Man, Iron Man, and more Iron Man as we go through the next suit that I am making. So until then, thanks for watching.